Hey carnivores, I'm still here with my friend Harry Sue. If you saw a few weeks ago, we did a video where Harry schooled me on how to make competition brisket. Well, at the same time, we made ribs. And so now we're gonna go through all of the steps that Harry uses to make competition ribs and what I use for backyard ribs. Cause Harry's won how, how many rib competitions? One of you, and uh, it's always great to cook with Al. He's a super nice guy and he really has a lot of skills. So don't be fooled by his modesty. He is really a great pit master. Thank you, Harry. You're a nice guy. So a uh, spare rib comes from a hog. Uh, usually you have a left and a right. So incidentally, uh, he's also holding a left one. So we have two lefties. Right. So it's a, it's a good pr uh, practice trim for yep. two lefties. Right. Yep. How do you like your trim, your spare rib? You like to cook it whole or you like to trim it to a St. Louis? So I trim into a St. Louis, although sometimes I cook them whole, but most of the time I'd rather use this for a high fat content pork for sausage or I'll make rib tips or something like that. So my first step is I remove the diaphragm. Do you remove the diaphragm when you're doing comp? Uh, absolutely, yeah. So for uh, competition, which is what I'm doing, I will show you the six things I do to the rib. Okay. And you're going to show me kind of your more your backyard version. Together. So what are the pros and cons you've noticed in your journey as a backyard pit master cooking its trim and untrimmed? So let's start with untrimmed. It's a lot harder to keep this out here, which is thinner. The rib tips are going to cook faster than the ribs on the bone or even close to the bone. If you look closely here, you can see that there's a big difference in thickness here. And so this is going to be overcooked. And then I end up, when I'm doing it, I end up having to do it with temperature management. So okay. placement on the grill, mm -hmm. direction of the ribs to try to mm -hmm. keep this from overcooking. So I trim and then I've got consistency from one end to the other. All right. Okay, good. So. Okay, excellent. Is that okay? Yeah, that looks like right. a nicely trimmed St. Louis rib. And I'll kind of run you through sort of my process. Very, very similar. Okay. So the six things that we do to a spare rib to make it a St. Louis right. is the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the sternum, which is the big bone. Right. On this particular rib, they already removed it. Right. So I don't, I only need to do five instead of six steps. So right. you cut this piece off, it comes off. The second thing I do is I do the same thing as you. I trim off the diaphragm, which is okay. the flap. On a cow, this is known as the fajita meat. So when right. you go and eat fajitas, this is the, what you do. Step number three is I like to remove the rib tip, which is the top part. Right. And the way I do that, I use Harry's fourth bone technique. Okay. Uh, spare rib has about 13 bones, sometimes 14. The longest bone on a spare rib is actually bone number four. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four. I'm going to run my knife right here. That right. is the longest bone. Okay. I'm going to make a parallel cut going this way, right. parallel to this side like so. Right. I'm going to cut it right across like that. And that will sever the rip tip perfectly right without worrying about getting into the bone right right and i only have a little bit of knuckle bone left so that's okay, perfect nice yeah and like you this is thick and this is thin right i'll trim it off around the 10th bone marks like so this part has a lot of fat right i don't care for it for competition so in my competition rib i have nine bones oh so you're just taking that whole bone off i take the whole okay. bone off yeah. so i have a nine bone rack this is for competition and the way you pick a rib is you pick it based on size right Symmetry, striation, mm -hmm. and marbling. Okay. So this one is pretty good. Yours is better. So in competition, yours, this part will be better than mine. All right. All right. So next thing we do is we pull the membrane. Like L, you can use a butter knife and kind of wedge it, but a lot of times it's just easier to just pick it up and just peel it off like that. I just use a paper napkin. That's a trick. So right. the paper napkin makes it kind of not so slippery. So I just use a paper napkin. And it's just the same thing. There's two membranes, so you don't want to pull the one underneath. Right. You want to pull the top membrane. And once you get it to the other side, you can kind of grab it so and pull the whole piece off like that. Okay. So here's my nine bone against your ten bone, ten, bone. ten or eleven bone. Okay. Okay. So there you go. All right. So let's get some seasoning on here. And once again, you've got a whole array there, and I'm keeping it simple for the backyard. I don't find that I need to do a lot. Now I'm using a binder. I'm using mustard. Now, you know, we did the binder experiment that aired a couple of weeks ago and- What did you find uh, out? So the Worcestershire, we couldn't taste. Like we had a control that was water. You guys saw that one, right? And the Worcestershire tasted very similar to the water. Ah, okay, okay. All right. okay. Yeah. I say, oh chap. Okay. Jolly good show. So tally ho, right? <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, this is the American Lee and Perrins. Right. And tell the audience uh, where is this made? Pittsburgh. All right. So made in Pennsylvania. 
Not the fancy British stuff, right? So, so I, I used this because I couldn't find the stuff that you said you sure. use. Yeah, so true. maybe the difference is the mm. stuff that you get from the UK, which I tasted and is definitely more flavorful. Maybe sure. that would have come through. That's what you've got. So there, I had right? the real thing from England. So when I taught the class in London, they threw my Worcestershire in the trash. They said, never come to England and bring your stinking Worcestershire made in Philly. Okay, why don't we try a little bit and then we do mustard. How about we do a schmear? Do both? Let's do both. Let's All right, let's do yeah, both, yeah. see if we can get a little. So we there. have All the right. best of the America and best of England. All right. So, okay, I'll, I'll help All right. you with you a little do bit of there. schmear here. There you go, okay. Okay. just a little bit. Mustard. Right, and then I'll do mustard. And then I'm gonna use, so I used your Love Meat Tender rub in that experiment. It was so good. Wow. So I'm going to use that again. So Al, you're in luck because uh, a lot of teams like my all-purpose rub. Right. And the one that they buy for competition is actually this version here. Okay. So what we do is my co-packer adds hot MSG to my AP rub. Really? Okay. On September 21st, guess what happened? I released my new V2. This product with no MSG, all natural, is as good as my MSG product. Wow. So I would like you to try it. All right, I'm definitely gonna try it. I'm excited. You know, Harry, <laughs> you might not know this, but one of the first videos of yours that I watched was your umami bomb brisket video. Oh, wow. Okay. Where you took commercial products and then you took natural products and you made your own umami. Okay. And that taught me so much about flavor. Mm -hmm. It's really one of the things that inspired yeah. me to get really creative with barbecue and move beyond the basics. So, your tongue memory from V1 is still there. You can try right? it. One pair V2 against V1. So you're going to apply the rub until it becomes opaque underneath. Right. Kind of like that's perfect. Right. And then you stop. And you notice he started with the bone side and then he's going to flip it over and do the meat side now. Right, and that's because this is my presentation side, so it's okay if we get a little bit of smudging down on the bone side, but up here we want it to be beautiful, whether we're competition or backyard. Now, do you here. like to let your rub sit? I do. For how long? So I'll do this at least an hour. Okay. Sometimes I'll even do them overnight, like mm -hmm. we're cooking today, so mm -hmm. we'll let this go and get the smoker mm -hmm. up to temp, and by the time it's up, mm -hmm. it'll be ready. But I want that sweat from the meat. So you ready to show me up and... Okay, so uh, for competition, right. obviously I have to do a little bit more because uh, we're looking for more complexity, layers and layers of flavor. When you serve the rib to the judges, they'll only take one bite. Right. So you really have to cause an explosion of flavor, mm -hmm. a symphony of flavor in the judge's mouth. So what we do is we tend to overproduce the product and I'll right. show you how we overproduce. What we're gonna do is we're gonna inject the meat to give it more flavor. I'm just gonna plunge my needle between the bone like so and I'm gonna inject it and fill up the pocket with a little bit of liquid, move it up, inject some more, move it up, and plump up the rib between the bone. So now I injected that Hammer. side, now I'm just doing the same, just filling up the pockets with the uh, liquid here. And you're just I going can. between the bones. And I go between the bones pockets. and uh, okay. I go from both sides. And you don't need a lot of injection, but just enough to give it ad additional flavor. This is the only thing in uh, barbecue you cannot overdo. Okay, so now it's nicely injected, so you can okay. see how it's more plump than yours now. It's plump, yes. plumped up. Yes. So I'm gonna add a little bit of product to it now. So the first layer that goes on is some pepper. I'm, I'm gonna use the pepper from my uh, Texas style Lone Star, which is a Texas style brisket Dalmatian rub. On the back, I use my pecan rub on the pecan back. Pecan rub. And uh, I'm gonna basically add a little bit of my umami rub. It's a white color and it gives us tremendous punch in terms of flavor with no MSG at all. So just a ni nice finishing touch like that and we're okay. done. Okay. So salt, pepper, pecan, umami rub mm -hmm. on the back. Yep. And then Not I'm a flip very it over. heavy. The back was uh, a nut rub. So the front right. I'm using my uh, cherry and my peach rub. So this okay. is fantastic flavor. Cherry and peach on the meat side. On the meat side. And you notice that nice. it's got beautiful flecks of chili in there. Yeah. So it gives a little bit of heat. I'm gonna now add my honeylicious peach on it. I gently tap it down and I just finish it with my umami rub, which is kind of like a supercharged the MSG, same, non MSG with non MSG. Side. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. so just a little bit of touch on top as a finishing rub. And I let this sit for about an hour and a half. All right, come, here, come on over here. and You can see already how the meat is sweating and how different this looks. And it's only been 10 or 15 minutes, right? So when we reach that hour, hour and a half point, his is going to do the same thing but these are gonna look very different. You're not gonna see really anything dry on the surface.
All right, so Harry, these are looking good, I think. I think the bark is set on these. There's no extra moisture. None of the rub is coming off when I touch it. I think they're ready to come off. What do you think? Absolutely. L, the uh, ribs are ready for the next phase, which yes. is the wrap. I understand you're going to do a paper wrap. I'm, I'm going to do a paper wrap. I'm going to use Kerrygold Irish butter to add a little extra fat <laughs> to both of mine. Now, I need to cut this into pats, so I asked Harry for a <laughs> butter knife. For those of you who are fans of Dal Strong, you definitely want to check out this 27-inch knife. That is a real knife. And Dal Strong, since I know you're watching, I don't have one of these, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's cut off some butter pats here. So we're going to set this on the side. All right, so my wrap is really simple, Harry. Okay. So straight down on the butter, and the butter if you haven't been watching, the butter just adds a little bit extra fat and I'm meat side down so that as the butter melts and as the juices continue to melt on and render on the rib, that it's gonna braise in its own liquid. So we wanna end with the meat side down. Okay, mine are ready. Now you ready to wrap yours? Rock and roll. Harry, you got a lot of products over there. Absolutely, Al. So in competition cooking, we have to up the game. Right. And uh, normal butcher paper is fine, but I'm going to show you guys what I do in competition. I have a few products I'm going to use on it. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, mango nectar, a little bit of cayenne for heat, a little bit of agave for the sweetness that we're going to bring, a little brown sugar, a touch of my umami rub here, and a little bit of butter. And people always ask me, do you use salted or unsalted? I use salted butter. You use salted? Okay. Salted butter, and we're going to kind of cut it with a smaller knife. This is the beautiful yeah. Valhalla this series the Valhalla. knife. I love that it's handle. Beautiful. It's one uh, of the prettiest knives. It's got a nice, beautiful yeah. inlay showing you the craftsmanship, and it's got a little part here that you can, I guess, scale fish or dispatch enemies or whatever you want to do. So Al, when we cook competition ribs, right, we are looking for a perfect rib. Right. Perfect bone, perfect pullback. Right. So here's a couple of black belts I want to show you. So the first thing you want to do is, you see these black little blood spots? Right. For competition, I clean it off. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So I don't want the judges to be critical to say, oh, that's some black blur on the bone. When you cook competition, you have to leave no margin for error. Got it. And that's totally competition technique. You do not right. do this for your family. And yeah, parents. I've never done that before. Okay. Okay. Second thing we want to do on a rib is that we want to get the perfect pull back from the bone. Right. And we want the pull back to be even. Here's a black belt tip. The, uh, there's a membrane on the back. There's a membrane right on the bone. Right. So I'm going to take my two fingers, I'm going to push down and break the membrane like so. Okay, like that. And that breaks oh. the membrane. So that way, when I cook the rib, it's going to retract beautifully, nice and even, like my Instagram shots you see on social media. That's how I accomplish this kind of trick here. So now we're going to apply now. I can put brown sugar like that. Right. But it's very uneven. So here's the black belt tip. You go to Amazon and you get yourself a eight cup flour a sifter. Flour sifter. And that allows you to apply the product a lot more evenly. And that may seem like a lot, but that's about the amount. We are putting a lot on there. Yeah, okay. That's about right for the competition. I'm going to put a little bit of a mango nectar. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of heat. I'm going to put a little bit of a touch of, touch of cayenne. And be very careful when you do this. You do not want to overdo this. You want to do this about a foot away. That's a touch of cayenne. Okay. And a little bit of agave. Got For it. those of you who are not aware what agave is, it's actually the cactus. Right. And that's how you make margaritas with it. So the sweetener in the margarita is done with the, with the cactus, with cactus, the agave. cactus right. agave. And right. it's, for those who are diabetic, it's 1.8 times sweeter than sugar. So that's enough agave. I'm going to add a touch of my uh, umami blend. This has a lot of uh, kind of umami flavor on it. And I'm going to just dust it just a little bit on it. And then the last one is adding the... The Kerrygold... No, they're not Kerrygold. They're not Kerrygold butter. <laughs> okay. And a couple of pieces here. All right? And we'll do the back side exactly the same. And yeah. I'm going to do a burrito wrap. Okay. okay. So, fold it like a burrito style. And we'll cook it for another hour, maybe hour 15. Right. To get it to the perfect bite through tenderness. Now, the okay. bite through tenderness on a competition rib is very different than that of a backyard. Right. What you're going to do is you're going to cook it falling off the bone, and that's great. But yeah. in competition, when the judges bite the rib, right. they should see their teeth marks, and there should be liquid on the bone, and the liquid on the bone should dry out within a few seconds. That window okay. of perfection only happens about an eight-minute window in a five-hour cook. Wow. So I, when I cook ribs, I try to pay attention. Yeah, I bet. I mean, I don't like mine falling off the bone. I like a little bite, but that's you're, you're creating a lot more experience than I am. I, I've probably got a half hour window of when I got to pull mine off. So with your help today, we will nail it in the eight minute window. 
Okay, so it's time to see the difference. All, All right? right, let's do it. All right, so let's open these up. Of course, yours is easier to open because you got your fancy burrito wrap. You got a lot of juice. Okay. All right. So, so let's, let's see. talk about the appearance, color. All right. So, I did not get a lot of pullback on mine. Okay. You, yeah, I, you I, I had a little trick here, so I yeah, you got membrane, a perfect so. pullback. My color is a little bit mahogany-ish, right? Like I told you, when I go to bed at night, I fantasize about the 27 shades of ribs. Right. And that's kind of the, how the color looks like. So we're gonna sauce it now, and you're using some of my sauces. Yeah. And I blended my sauces like Lego blocks. So right a couple one. of thoughts here. Yeah. Uh, in a competition setting, I would basically put the sauce on right and my ribs are super hot right because it just came out the pit and i'll let the residual heat set the sauce okay. alternatively you can paint the sauce on and put it in the pit for put about five minutes just right. to set the sauce which is what i usually do but okay cool yeah but today today fun. yeah you know set okay. so what i do is i i mix my sauce on the side so i'm gonna use my 50 50 carolina tangy and cheeky sweet kansas city so i'm gonna add it here i'm gonna mix it on the tabletop here I mean, I feel like I'm from North Carolina I, or live in North Carolina. I should be using that, but I, you know, okay. I'm going with what I know. Yeah. So, so for I'm doing 40, here. 60 sweet, sweet on the side, and I'm gonna add a touch of heat. So my okay. hot sauce is very unique because it gives you four seconds of burn. Yeah, this was this was a crazy like you guys. If you haven't tried this, listen to what he's saying. So four seconds of burn. Four seconds of uh, basically uh, numb. It was numbing, numb, right? Yeah, yeah which yeah. is really unique, yeah, and right? Then, and then four seconds of fade. So you're gonna you drizzle it straight onto it, right? Okay, so I'm it's gonna be really straight spicy. on. Okay. So it's gonna be an outer layer, and I'm trying not to disturb the original too much. Now normally I would put it back on to glaze, but I, I don't think we need to do that. So I'll show you everybody a little tip here. So we spray a little bit of water because I have brush marks. I'll cut right from the middle too. Okay. So, so you of course have pullback, so you can see your bones. Yes. I of course don't. So I'm gonna cut like this because I'm a cheating cheater. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. I'm pretty happy with my first one. Of course, I'm making a mess here. Okay, and I'm But I'm not in a competition. So, so my friends and family are gonna judge me based on how they taste only. And I'm gonna taste one on the side, make some final seasonings. All right. Oh wait, you're gonna taste and make more seasoning changes? Mm -hmm. This is the most important part of a contest. Okay. So it requires a little bit of tweaking, so I'm gonna tweak it, give me a second. Okay. So mine are not winning any presentation awards. Just a touch of heat. It's a different kind of rib, so we, we, should, we shouldn't compare apples and oranges. It's right. a different But I'll touch, I'll touch up here just so that <laughs> I got something to do while you're all doing right. all that fancy stuff. All right, are all right, you happy yet? Let's bring our tasters. Where'd you get this slap your daddy oh, apron? You're supposed oh, to be wearing oh. more vegan stuff. This is East meets West, right? North Carolina. All right. You guys look good in your slap okay, your daddy Steven, stuff. Go for it. Okay, here we go. Competition started. All right, competition ribs for both yeah. of you. Cheers. 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 <laughs> a little bit of heat, a little yeah. bit of sweet. It's really sweet for layers me. Layers and layers of flavor. Yeah. That's, and that's it's a little amazing. salty, but for competition, this is what we do. It, it is sweet, and then it's done being sweet, and then it's hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So layers and layers of flavor, so you go to yeah. different phases. Yes. All right. Yeah. What do you think, Steven? Good. This is a perfect meat candy. All right. <laughs> right. You guys. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, cheers one for you. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so not as complex a flavor as Harry's. Nope, nope. It, it's when it's done with the first flavor, it that doesn't go any further. It is good though. It's saying good words. It's great. Nice <laughs> bite marks. Very tender. But very different, right? All right. I think this was a lot of fun. I learned a ton about what to do when we do competition. And you said I can come help you on a comp someday. I need to put Al on my team. He can cook on my contest. I hope you guys had fun. Watch this video next, the one that's right over there, over Steven's head. Point over there, Steven. And then we'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More Vegans. Vegans.